Glory to Jesus Christ. So often in our society, we worry so much about this idea of self-esteem that we overlook the problem of the ego. Psychologists like Freud were not saying anything new when they recognized this aspect of our psyche. You see, whether we feel at ease in our skin or not, it really doesn't matter about our ego. Our ego, st ego still desires attention, whether that be positive attention or negative attention. And it's not intrinsically wrong to want in, uh, some sort of attention, because we are made to be communal. We are made to have healthy relationships with others. But like everything else in the human existence, this desire has been distorted by sin. And so we crave more attention than we need, or than we deserve, or we crave unhealthy types of attention in our lives. We see this everywhere we turn, in trends like social media, in TikTok, and YouTube, and so forth. In our Gospel reading today from Matthew, our Lord gives the antidote to this dilemma. The passage begins with two blind men. They're following Jesus and asking Him for healing. And so the Lord asks them if they believe. In other words, He's saying to them, Do you trust in Me? Do you know that I have the power to do this? To heal you? To return your sight to you? And in response to their faith, he does open their eyes. He makes them whole again, enables them to see. And of course, when this appears in Scripture, it is also a metaphor. It is also pointing to the internal change that's happening within them. Not only are they able to see, but they're able to see God through their faith. He restores to them fullness and wholeness because of that faith. But then Jesus does something unusual. It says, He sternly warns them, saying, See that no one knows it. He doesn't want anyone to know that, that He's done this. And why would He do this? We would think that He would want others to know that He is the Son of God, that He's come, that He's revealing the Gospel to the world as He does these miracles. But we must remember that He is not only the Son of God, He is also truly human at the exact same time. And in His human nature, through His human actions, He models for us the virtue of humility. You see, it's didactic. It's a teachable moment, if you will. Put another way, Christ shows us through His actions what it means to give glory to God alone. You see, our faith should not be a way to draw attention to ourselves. It's easy to fall into this trap, this desire to satisfy our ego. And we can especially do this through this false display of religion, through public piety, through showing how pious we are in the, in the face of others. It can come when we brag about the things we do, maybe our fasting and prayer and so forth. It can even come as we are studying the teachings of the church through theology. We can go about acting as if we know more than others. It can be a way to bolster ourselves, to lift ourselves up and draw attention to ourselves. And of course, one of the most common ways that we do this is by publicly condemning others, a sort of religious virtue signaling. We like to say that others got it wrong, others are doing it wrong, others are saying something that's problematic in a way to draw attention to ourselves and lift ourselves up. But when we do these things, we are not serving God, we're serving ourselves. And so we shouldn't do things for the sake of our own ego, but rather solely to serve God. As our Lord says elsewhere in the Gospel of Matthew, when we do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. We do it for God and only for God. And returning to our reading, we learn that the two blind men do not listen to Jesus. It says, when they departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. And so we're to ask, are they being disobedient? Did they not have real faith after all to disobey the Lord's word? Well, St. John Chrysostom commenting on this passage says, no, that is not the case. He says that it's what they had to do. You see, Christ, his job was to model humility for us. But their job was to give thanks to God for what they, had happened to them. In other words, they didn't go about spreading this news to draw attention to themselves, but rather as a way to point others to Christ. They're pointing away from themselves and to the other. And so this is the second important takeaway we have from this reading. It's not about us, it's about Him. It's about the Lord. 
When we give thanks to God for everything, it redirects that attention to Him. Our focus should not be on ourselves or even on how strong our faith is, but on who God is and what God does. Now, theologically, we recognize this idea of synergy, which means that we cooperate with God. We do not believe that God somehow possesses us, He doesn't compel us, He doesn't force us to act. The Scriptures make clear that we must do something. We must struggle to become worthy vessels of His grace. But at the same exact time, we must constantly check ourselves, our ego, in order to freely cooperate with God's work. And even so, even though we have to do our part, we must be careful not to take credit for the things that God does in us and through us. The saints of all times have told us that the moment we begin to boast as if it's of ourselves, we completely empty ourselves of whatever blessing, whatever good we may have achieved in that action, in that deed. So we must hold everything in balance. We must be faithful, we must act faithfully, while at the same time not taking credit for the outcome, but directing that attention back to God in praising and thanking Him. We can see then how humility and thanksgiving go hand in hand. This is the antidote to the push of our ego, to our unbounded desire for attention. As Christ has shown us, we are to act humbly, but we also shouldn't hide our faith under a basket, he tells us. We must hold humility and thanksgiving in, in this perfect balance. But how do we do that? One of the modern saints, St. Sophronia of Essex, taught us that to be humble, we must, we must latch ourselves on to a humble thought and descend with it down, to ride it down into the very depths of humility. And there are many ways to do this. For example, one way we can do this is to only compare ourselves to either Christ or His saints, not to other human beings around us. Because when we compare ourselves to Christ and to the saints, we realize how far we have to go, how far we've fallen short, how imperfect we are. Another way we can do this is simply to be honest with ourselves about our faults and our sins rather than constantly justifying them to ourselves. And then finally, we can just simply refuse to accept the praise of others, to redirect it to God every time someone starts to praise us. But of course, I'm often asked, because we live in what I call the psychological age, where psychology has replaced spirituality, the life of the church. And so people immediately go to this idea again of self-esteem. They say, Father, won't this lead to depression? Well, yes, if we simply are beating ourselves up and rejecting attention, and doing this as an end in itself, yes, that could lead to depression. That could even lead to despair. But this is not how it works. If humbling ourselves, you could say, is the negative side of the equation, then turning to God and giving thanks to God is the positive side of the equation. They go hand in hand. As often as we count our blessings and turn to the Lord to praise Him, we receive grace from Him. He lifts us up. He makes us whole. He gives us the attention. As we direct the attention away from ourselves and towards Christ, it is Him that we receive in that relationship. You see, humility without thanksgiving is cold and lifeless. But when they come together, they become transformative for us. The two blind men in the Gospel reading came to Jesus because they had faith, and they're described as faithful persons. And it says the Lord quizzed them about their faith for our benefit, to teach us about the meaning of faith. He charged them not to tell others of the miracle in order to show us the path of humility. But as Christ says elsewhere, unless we can humble ourselves as little children, we cannot enter into the kingdom. We must be like them. We must be like Christ, who shows us the way of humility. And yet these two blind men also in a way that seemed like they were disobedient, went around the countryside praising God and pointing people back to Christ. And this was also an act of faith. And through their example, we learned about thanksgiving. It is only through constant gratitude to God that our humility is enlivened and made real. Our desire for attention 
will not be filled by any earthly, any worldly means. We become insatiable. We want more and more attention. Nothing will satisfy it. No amount of social media or relationships will satisfy the fullness of what we need, what we truly desire. And so oftentimes people will move from positive to negative attention if necessary, even displaying piety as a way to draw attention. But the only one who can truly give us the attention we need is God Himself. He is the one who satisfies us. He is the one who fills us. He is the one who directs Himself to us at all times, is always available for us, and is able to make us whole. So this is what is given to us then. Let us put our ego in check, and let us direct all our attention to the only one who is able to lavish us with the fullness of attention, our Lord and God and Savior. Jesus Christ, who together with His unoriginate Father, as all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, are worshiped and glorified unto the ages of ages.